Take her down. Rose Winters is one of the most powerful characters we have ever seen in the Resident Evil franchise. This was proven with the abilities that she's shown during her starring role in the Shadow of Rose DLC, where we see the culmination of someone who is a chosen progeny of the Megamyce, displaying abilities that are comparable to the likes of Resident Evil Village main antagonist Mother Miranda. I will take what is due. And also other main antagonists from Resident Evil 7, Evelyn. <laughs> but in order for us to understand the full scope of Rose's abilities, we have to delve back to the roots of the Megamyce, where we have to understand the historical foundation behind this organism, explaining the base powers that it can grant to those lucky enough to make contact with the Dark God, and how the abilities from this organism were essentially passed down from generation to generation, growing stronger and becoming more refined through the years. So in this video breakdown of Rose's powers, we're going to cover step by step on how this power of the Megamyce progressively evolved, where we cover each of the significant users of the mold that came about from this organism, learning about the specifics of the powers granted by the Dark God, with the process of this timeline spans over a hundred years, which we can begin with a scenario with Mother Miranda and the Megamyce, then moving decades later to Evelyn and the Connections, and lastly the Winters family, then eventually returning back full circle with Rose, again creating one of the most powerful characters in the Resident Evil franchise. Got this. Mother Miranda was the first documented user who had the powers over what they called the mold. This came about in the early 20th century, where in the beginning, Miranda around this time lived in an isolated rural village in Eastern Europe with her daughter Ava. Then suddenly, during the height of the Spanish flu pandemic, spanning between the years of 1918 to 1920, Ava became ill from this sickness, eventually losing her life in the process. Stricken with grief due to the loss of her daughter, Miranda decided to end her life in a cave nearby the village. Then completely by accident, she discovers the Megamyce, which she recounts this specific event in her diary, where she documents her chance discovery of the Dark God, what came about after, and her summary of important events that transpired throughout the course of her life, where it reads, My Ava, it's been 100 years since I lost you to the Spanish flu. I was so powerless back then. But now, now I can bring you back to life from the Megamyce. After I lost you, I was so stricken with grief that I wandered into a cave to die. I so wanted to be with you again, and that's when I found it. The Megamyce. Completely by accident. When I touched the black substance, my mind was overcome with knowledge. The Megamyce breaks down and absorbs the consciousness of those who have perished. I knew that if your consciousness was in there too, then there would be a way to bring you back. I just needed the right vessel. This documentation that Mother Miranda wrote in regards to the Megamyce identifies its abilities to absorb the consciousness of those who have died within this proximity, and how the process of knowledge or information was given back to her in a neural network type of manner, was supplemented with a file found in the Shadow of Rose DLC, where it states, Miranda's research claims that the Megamyce preserves the memories of people who have passed away within its area of influence, absorbing them in its own vast consciousness. We also know, based on our previous encounter, with the mold, that people who are contaminated with Immutomyce are connected in a kind of mold network. If we extrapolate from this, we can surmise that the subjects with strong affinity to the Immutomyce should be able to use a network to connect the memories of the dead within the Megamyce. To ensure I never see your face again, I will feed you to the Megamyce. 
So now we learn from Mother Miranda, its first user of the mold, that she discovered access that connects her to the information found within the Megamyce, and using this exact ability and reverse engineering its process, she sought to use it to find her daughter Ava's consciousness within this organism and implant it to a vessel she deemed appropriate. Also to reiterate, this notion of the Megamyce being able to work in a neural network type of manner is very important for the future events in the Resident Evil timeline, where this exact ability was highlighted within RE Village and used as a foundation to the story in the Shadow of Rose DLC, though we will get back to this exact topic later down the video. But for now, let's continue to follow the events that transpired from Mother Miranda's point of view and see the process of her research into the Dark God. This would give way to many inhumane experiments that she enacted to the innocent villagers who lived nearby, causing most to mutate into lichen-like monsters, which this was all a process of finding a suitable host for Ava. This would go on for many more decades, and another crucial event wouldn't happen until the early 2000s. Here, Mother Miranda would be approached by the mysterious crime syndicate known as The Connections, with their objective was to create a bio-organic weapon, or BOW. Mother Miranda assisted by giving them a sample of the mold and her daughter's DNA. This would allow The Connections to propagate their own inhumane experimentations. Mother Miranda seemed to be around during this process, and was later photographed alongside the finished BOW product, Evelyn, where soon we will break down her role as a second main user of the powers over the mold. But with that said, Mother Miranda's prevalence wouldn't really be felt until the events of Resident Evil Village, where in that game, we see what types of abilities she's mastered, and how she used this to her advantage that eventually becomes a catalyst for the storylines that unfolds from then on. But for now, we'll just have to digress on this topic, because before we can proceed about learning about Mother Miranda's powers, we first have to cover Evelyn's abilities, and how this translates later on for Rose. As mentioned before, the Connections wanted to create their own BOWs, with the ideal means of being able to infiltrate behind enemy lines without the need of using conventional combat. The byproduct from their research and experimentations was the creation of Evelyn, using the samples of the mold and Eva's DNA provided by Mother Miranda, with Evelyn artificially engineered to look around 10 years old, providing the Connections the means of non-confrontational combat, allowing this BOW to sneak behind enemy lines and wreak havoc using the powers over the mold strain. So this is where we can highlight Evelyn's abilities and how this in the end pertains to Rose, with the first and foremost significant power that Evelyn portrays is the ability to produce the mold and infect those in her proximity, causing those unfortunate enough to be in her path to be inoculated with this strain, which results in them being in servitude to Evelyn's will. A clear example of this was the Baker family and Mia Winters, and how they acted once infected by Evelyn, causing the parties involved to lose their minds acting in a psychopathic manner, and the process of all this was the base root of the Molds and Megamyces neural network ability, where it can influence those exposed to the strain, though in Evelyn's case causing her victims to bend to her desires. And unfortunately for these people, they barely have any say or control on how they act once infected, where there's even evidence that they are still cognitively aware of what they're doing while in the middle of their psychopathic tirade. Also, what's interesting is a function on how Evelyn goes about controlling those who she's infected, where she causes her victims to suffer hallucinations and auditory cues. If that's not enough, Evelyn does have the ability to display feats as if she's levitating and summoning a burst of wind from her body. This was shown when our main protagonist from Resident Evil 7, Ethan Winters, tries to get closer to her. And lastly, if all other abilities have been exhausted and brought to the brink of death, Evelyn is able to mutate into a hideous monster, engulfed his surroundings with a mold and producing vast amounts of branch-like tendrils from his body. This was in full display at the end of RE7, just showing how potent Evelyn was in her last moments. I just but with that said, the inner workings of Evelyn's mold and the process of her pathology from the mold infection was supplemented with further documentation found in this game, where it notes in details the working of those exposed to the mold from the E-Type series BOW like Evelyn, where it states, Initial infection, the mold ingests nutrients from the subject's body to propagate itself and slowly takes over cells within the body. As a side effect of this, the infected subject gains remarkable regenerative abilities during experiments 
tests, we removed arms and legs from the test subjects and found that they were able to co-op the amputated limbs in a matter of minutes. Mid-stage infection, once the mold reaches the brain, the subject's thoughts become in tune with those of the E-series asset. If this state continues, the host will lose all sense of ego. Complete infection. After every cell in the body has been taken over by the mold, the subject begins to lose their human form. Physical mutations differ from case to case, but all result in him or her acquiring incredible physical strength. Containing a subject at this stage would be extremely difficult. They're mine now. So this report breaks down what we've covered about the infection with the Baker family and Mia Winters, and how the process of being infected with the mold causes the victims to be, as said in the report, in tune with Evelyn, reaffirming the notion of the neural network capabilities drawn from the likes of the mold and Megamycete. Next importantly pointed out was the enhanced regenerative ability of the infected, which varying degrees of this was displayed in RE7, where those infected can sustain a vast amounts of fatal damage and come back relatively fine, with a report makes good mention of those infected being able to co-op amputated limbs within several minutes, which this brings us back to Ethan Winters, the very character who provided several examples of having body parts cut off, but seemingly be able to reattach them back without much consequence. And speaking of Ethan, the fact that he displayed this ability is a huge hint on how Rose came about having her powers, because later on it's revealed that he, like Mia, was infected with Evelyn's mold. The only difference here though was that he wasn't cleansed from the strain like Mia was by the end of RE7, with this factor ongoing at the time of Rosa's conception. Is there something you're not telling me? So with that said, the root cause of all this goes back in sequence from the Megamyce, Mother Miranda, Evelyn, and the Mold Strain, giving us the information that helps us understand the foundation to Rosa's powers. I'm tired of being a freak. I want to have friends. I want to live a normal life without this curse. That purifying crystal can make that happen. Make me normal. As I touched on in the previous chapter, the circumstances surrounding Rose's birth was crucial to know, where it was revealed in the latter part of Resident Evil Village that her father Ethan was a mold being. Of course, the innate abilities that we've covered so far would be present with Rose, with Mother Miranda, who as main antagonist of this game commented on Rose's potential, stating, So now she sees Rose as a perfect vessel for her daughter Ava, a vessel capable of similar abilities that Evelyn has displayed in RE7, but presumably refined in a much more controlled way, with several examples made during the course of RE Village, where Rose displayed the very powers that we covered already, with one was her ability to network with those infected from the mold or Megamyce, providing those with the affinity to the Dark God to see visions of her memories. This was shown with Ethan, and how in several moments while handling a Rose flower, Ask, he would see a flashback of events from Rose's point of view. And speaking of a rose flask, this brings us to the next ability that she's displayed, which was her innate powers of regeneration. Because during the course of Ari Village, we learned that Rose was abducted by Mother Miranda. She then caused Rose to crystallize and promptly split her into four different portions, placing these divided parts inside the flask, hence the rose flask. So now whenever Ethan made contact with these items, he gave him those visions of Rose's memories. But what's more was the fact that even when crystallized and split into four parts, Mother Miranda assured us that she would still survive this ordeal and come back relatively normal. She was quoted on this in one of the files found in the game, where she states, This is the chosen child. She will return to her original form no matter what befalls her. And since we are on the topic of Mother Miranda, let's go ahead and finish our breakdown of her powers, and how this provides context to how powerful Rose truly was. With the first powers that Mother Miranda displayed was the ability to shapeshift into various forms, where she turned herself into Mia, the old hag, and a flock of crows. Second was her ability to shapeshift into her surroundings, seemingly phasing through the ground without any drawbacks to her overall form. Third was the innate regenerative ability and endurance she's portrayed in Ari Village, where it was shown that she's 
suffered countless seemingly fatal injuries, but was able to come back fine, with the only time she seemed to have been affected by conventional weaponry was right after she declared that she was losing her powers, but even then she still survived a direct hit, only causing her to show her further abilities granted by the Megamyce, where we see Mother Miranda constantly shapeshifting between a molded humanoid form, to a spider-like transformation, and lastly to a creature who can take flight, and on top of this, she's able to produce branch-like tendrils from the ground, a similar feat that we saw from Evelyn in her final form in RE7. What's more was Mother Miranda was able to produce fireball projectiles at will. And lastly, again, we have to reaffirm Mother Miranda's superhuman durability, where it was shown in real time the vast amounts of damage she's able to undertake. So with that said, all these abilities are just a precursor to the final product that we see with Rose, where in the shadow of Rose DLC, not only does she deal with the likes of both Evelyn and Mother Miranda, but also she shows a progression of her powers found only when she delves into the realm of the Megamyce. I can show you things even Chris doesn't know I can do. The basic premise behind the story in Shadow of Rose has us following Rose's attempt to rid of herself of her powers, which within this DLC has given many indications that she sees her abilities to be a curse. Growing up ridiculed for this and looked as though she was a freak by her peers, so now with a chance to become normal, Rose was given the idea of diving into the realm of the Megamyce, where it was said that a purifying crystal found inside could help with removing her powers. Interestingly enough, this is the basic premise of the Megamyce's ability to allow those exposed to his power to connect in a neural network type of manner as previously mentioned before. Also another interesting fact that we learn later within the DLC is that those attuned to the Dark God's power in real life, hence Rose, Ethan, Evelyn, and Mother Miranda, that they can control certain aspects within the realm of the Megamyce. This will be profound with the amount of examples that the aforementioned characters display within the storyline. This was also supplemented with Mother Miranda's research file found in this DLC where it states, the Megamyce absorbs the memories of all life within this reach, but there are laws which govern this world within it. It seems worthwhile to catalog them as they become apparent. Number 1. The memories that comprise this realm do not strictly reflect reality. Number 2. Only those who are attuned to the Mutamyce in real life retain control of their faculties here in this realm. This aligns with my understanding of the Megamyce as revealed to me in its visions before my death. Yes, my death. My physical body is gone. Absorbed absorbed into the Megamyce, and yet I do not despair, for this fate has granted me fascinating insights. All those years I strive, have continued to strive, they are not for nothing. The memories, the consciousness, understanding, and knowledge I accumulated in life have transferred here to the Megamyce, where it serves as a source of power within this realm. If I can harness this power, I believe I can use it to affect the thoughts and memories of others. So with that said, we have a great basis of understanding on how things work when Rose finally delves inside the realm of the Megamyce, helping us understand how her powers will grow as we move along the storyline. But of course, as mentioned by the file, the gameplay we see may not reflect reality in its entirety, bringing forth the more bizarre and supernatural aspects to the front, allowing us to see by the end how all this culminates in unleashing Rose's true powers. But at the moment, we first begin with the latent abilities that Rose displays blaze early in the story. This was highlighted when she was attacked by monsters called Face Eaters, where she was able to repel them to a certain degree. With this exact power growing as we continue on the storyline, where Rose would be able to pick up several of these glowing blue flasks, this would allow her to strengthen the ability that she used against the Face Eaters, giving her the chance to use this repeatedly to a certain amount, which is shown with a gauge meter on the bottom right hand side, and the effects of this stronger ability could cause several monsters to be slowed in their tracks, giving Rose the opportunity to escape or killing them using conventional weaponry. What's more was the utility of this power being able to destroy what they call sclerosia, a core that infects the surrounding environment with a mold. Another file found explains in detail how Rose's powers disrupt the very mechanism of the sclerosia, allowing her to pave her path on forward countless times throughout the gameplay in this DLC, where it states, I have found a means of dramatically destabilizing parts of the mutamycete network by introducing a disruptive force to block the auto-inducers they use for communication. For example, the hard-packed cores of mold known as sclerosia begin to break down on 
on a cellular level and disintegrate when thus disrupted. Sclerotia form when the mutamycete develops in new locations, serving as a sort of anchor point or foothold. They are often associated with a patch of liquid void through which the mold has spread. When the autoinducers of the sclerotia are disrupted, it begins to break down. Any liquid void connected to the sclerotia will also disintegrate. So now on top of this utility of using Rose's ever-growing power of being able to disrupt enemies and the sclerotia, the manner of using this ability against other enemies within this DLC is also shown many times. This is most profound later on when she uses it against Evelyn. The very same main antagonist from Resident Evil 7 returns in this realm. Using the principles mentioned before of the Megamyces' ability to absorb the consciousness or information of those attuned to his powers, this would allow Evelyn to manipulate her surrounding environment, which we can see this ability to be able to manifest their own part of the realm within the consciousness of the Megamyces, and the degree of influence you can have within this realm may vary depending on how attuned they were with the powers of the Dark God in reality. So here in Evelyn's case, she would apply this ability in a terrifying way, using the Beneviento dolls and the life-size mannequin of Mia Winters as obstacles, while also tormenting Rose for a good portion of her playthrough, using her traumatic memories as ways to impede her journey. Though this comes to a climax when we go face to face with her, where in this boss fight, Rose would be able to use the same ability as before, attacking Evelyn in the opportune times. <laughs> And by the end of the battle, we see an interesting aspect to Rose's powers, where it would work in sync with the abilities from quote unquote Michael, a being who up to that point acted as a guide to Rose, as she delves deeper and deeper into the consciousness of the Megamyce, providing her with advice to navigate her way throughout this realm. Who are you? My guardian angel? But this time against Evelyn, he provides Rose an additional boost to her powers, allowing her to subdue the bioweapon. <laughs> What now? This is all your fault! And I will never let you have what you want! Rose, look out! Don't give up, Rose. Find that crystal. And then finally, we get to the latter portion of this DLC, which at this point, Rose's powers has grown to a certain extent, allowing her to use this ability more and more. But it wasn't until we got to the final act of the storyline that we saw the full potential of Rose's powers. This comes at the behest of Mother Miranda, returning back as main antagonist of this DLC, or same as Evelyn. Her consciousness was absorbed into the Megamyce after her death in RE Village, allowing her to live on within this world and continue her research into the Dark God. This was even to the point of being able to influence Rose outside of this realm. I had to lure you into this realm so that you might willingly relinquish your powers. No, but Kay said... Did he? Or did I? <sighs> that Kay was an illusion. Very convincing. Wouldn't you say? And during this time, Rose was able to find the purifying crystal, giving her the chance to live the normal life that she has always wanted. Though circumstances surrounding this encounter with Mother Miranda would cause Rose to have a change of heart, destroying the purifying crystal and unleashing her powers against Mother Miranda in this final boss fight. You can't escape Rose. Ethan! Persistence as always! Dad! Rose, now's your chance. Go live a normal life. Make friends. No one will ever call you a freak again. But... Rose, just go! I don't want to leave you! I know. I love you. But I need to know that you're safe. So please, just... Ethan, you insolent pest! I got this. Get out of here!
I've got this! Where from the beginning, we see that Rose is able to evade any incoming attack at blinding speed, almost like a quick step teleportation maneuver. Next was Rose's ability to harness her power for a stronger single attack, creating that mold branch like tendril shown with Evelyn's battle in RE7, and also was present in the surroundings in Mother Miranda's final battle in RE Village. What's more was that Rose now has the ability to repeat these stronger attacks by absorbing Mother Miranda's projectiles, and in doing so replenishing the gauge meter on the bottom right hand side. Also Rose was still able to use the utility of subduing Mother Miranda with the same ability that she's displayed throughout this playthrough, as long as we aim and focus on the general proximity of her body without interruptions for a short time, subduing her enough that allows Rose to use conventional weaponry. And lastly, by the end, we get the final sequence of her ability, this with the help of her father, Ethan, who this whole time pretended to be Michael all along, here he provides her with his powers, drawing that final blow that would help destroy Mother Miranda once and for all. So the battles against the many villains and monsters in the Shadow of Rose DLC gave us a great overview of Rose's powers, with Mother Miranda commending her ability several times throughout their final boss fight. Sure it's a far cry from the conventional trope of fighting against many B.O.W.s using conventional weaponry, but it was interesting to see this play out nonetheless, because if anything, this just proves how powerful Rose truly was, and if given the time to refine her abilities for many years like Mother Miranda, I'm sure we can see her powers grow exponentially for the foreseeable future, where she would be able to use her abilities in different utilities, possibly learning how to harness her powers like Mother Miranda, where she'd be able to shapeshift, pass through solid objects or surroundings, and then lastly, there could be a possibility of her being able to produce an infectious mold strain like Evelyn, allowing Rose to take hold of the minds of those around her, producing the same hallucinations or auditory cues that the Bakers suffered from, using the very utility that the Connections dreamed of using when they created Evelyn, which would operate on the basis of the Megamyces neural network capabilities. But with that said, we can only speculate on what kind of future this entails for Rose, where from here on out, she knows that she has to live on with her powers, without any chance of removing it due to the destruction of the purifying crystal, where again she does have to live under the scrutiny of her peers. Though if anything, seeing what we discovered in this Shadow of Rose DLC, we do get some credence on this moment shown from the post credit scene from Resident Evil Village, giving us proper context on what Rose was truly capable of, and how she would deal with those who ridicule her due to her lineage, again proving why she's one of the most powerful characters we have ever seen in the Resident Evil franchise. Anyways, what are your thoughts about Rose Winters and her powers? Did you guys enjoy the lean on the more supernatural side of things? Or should Resident Evil return back to the original trope of fighting against B.O.W.s in the conventional way? Please let me know your opinions on these in the comment section down below. Also, if you guys enjoyed the content, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day, and this is Hey Deva, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I can show you things even Chris doesn't know I can do.